one of the themes in my books is um, how AI could decode end time prophecy, right? And it's based on, I, I used to build macroeconomic models. Matter of fact, what got me a scholarship into my grad school, got me accepted into Harvard, was I had built a macroeconomic model that outperformed the Federal Reserve uh, and changed how we do build economic models to this day. So I was good at building, I was good at right, building algorithms, taking data, trying to run analysis. And it was a number of years ago. Now, I, I'm a Christian, and I'm not ashamed to say that, but I, I tell people I'm not a Christian like one of the crazy um, white supremacist kind of guys. Those guys are apostate. Um, and I'm not shy in saying that. But I've studied prophecy for a number of years. And I studied, I'm a very logical, rational guy. And and what I would, over, the, over a period of time, I began to hear what I thought of as biases in people's interpretation of prophecy. A lot of people say, oh, it, the Pope is the Antichrist, right? Anything that if somebody they don't understand or don't like becomes the Antichrist. And without understanding exactly what scriptures are actually teaching about things. Now, the Pope is, is part of an, a fallen church, and the Bible talks about seven versions of churches in the last days, and five of them are fallen. Five of them are basically corrupt and need repentance and have lost their testimony, their ability to, to show the light to the world. And, and, and we see that today. We see that in the in the white nationalists and the Christian nationalists. We see that in the, the Catholic Church in, in the way that they've, and the, the, the ethics and the um, sexual abuse and other abuses that they've had over the years, their inquisitions and their violence. And so, but, but the Antichrist had certain characteristics that were very prescriptive. So one of the things I did in my model, and it started with a National Geographic article, and it's a little bit of a short story, but I think it's really informative for your audience. The article was, was um, dealing with the loss of fish stocks around the world, in China, Asia, South America, North America, every major fishing grounds around the world. The fishing stocks had been depleted by well over 30%. And it reminded me of a prophecy called the seven trumpets, that the allegory of the prophecy and the allegories where much of the biases come in, um, said that a flaming rock was going to fall from the sky and land in the ocean. The outcome or the attributes of the prophecy were that a third of the fish of the sea would die, a third of the birds of the air would die, a third of the beasts of the land would die, and two thirds of the rivers of the earth would be so polluted that you couldn't drink from them. And I put down that article and I thought to myself, I said, well, heck, I, I'm watching the news. I'm pretty sure an asteroid didn't hit the sea, but I do. I, I was involved in environmental studies with the oil company. So I knew that in, uh, I've read books on the sixth extinction. I read environmental studies on loss of species, loss of birds of the air. Loss, every single one of those attributes had already occurred. And they didn't occur because of some God event of throwing an asteroid into the sea, they occurred because of the activities of man, mankind. And where we're more concerned about profits than we're concerned about the health and well-being of others, including our, our environment. And it started getting me thinking in a different way about prophecy. And I said, first thing that said, well, what if, so instead of the biases of, you know, the Protestants against the Catholics, and it's the left against the right, or the right against the left, and it's America against the, it's uh, Christians against Islam. There are all these biases that were brought in, but when you look at the scripture, it really doesn't say that at all, right? So these are in overlays. I said, well, what if I could strip away the bias? What if I could get past the allegory? And what if I just created a list of prophecies and their attributes? And what if I could find an event that had a high correlation to those attributes and or, or basically a document or study. I could find all kinds of environmental studies that already confirmed the attributes of that one, that one prophecy. And there's over 800 prophecies of the end times. There's more prophecies of the end times than there were the first coming. So what if I could start by collecting the data to see how many of these things I could uh, correlate through attributes? And then what if I calculate that event, the probability of that event, relative to other known human geologic history? So when was the last time, if I take away asteroid and supervolcano, which didn't happen, what was the last time under any circumstance when I saw that kind of um, around the world global, not just regional, but a global uh, decrease in species? Well, it was, two, it was 65 million years ago, 
Well, that means that we've experienced something that has a one in 65 million chance, right? So what if I took, I went to other prophecies, so the creation of Israel. Now, Israel was created. Now, you can hate Israel. You can love Israel. You can agree with the policies, hate their policies. That's irrelevant, right? But a global international body agreed together that they would create this land and that they would invite the people who were dispersed 2,000 years ago who still maintained that cultural identity to go back to that land. That's a singular event in all of human history. It's never happened before for any other people, for any other reason, and we have lots of examples of people being displaced from their lands and still retaining some level of their cultural identity. So that was a one in... Say, let's say that's one in, we have 6,000 years of human history. That's a one in 6,000 probability. So what I did is I started actually building a model and I spent like a really long week. I had a week off and I, my, I was divorced. I didn't have any money. And my, my son was over at my wife's house. And this was, again, I get obsessed with these problems. I, and I was at the time I had access to geolog. I was working with an oil company. I had algorithmic tools to do the probability analysis and the correlation analysis. So I spent a few weeks basically collecting data from a number of sources. I went in, I spent the first day or two inputting data into the database so the data would be there to run the algorithms. And then the second couple of days running up building algorithms. And then I ran the results. And from less than 30 different prophecies, because that's all I had time to do as opposed to the 800, I found data to support to provide high correlation that those had completed, including the one I talked about, the seven trumpets. Uh, the seven seals is another one. Um, and the probabilities came back that it was one in 1.4 trillion against random chance. So in other words, it was 1.4 trillion to one that we had entered into prophetic times. That the, uh, the, the things that we were experiencing in our daily day world that we've experienced since the end of the World War II are all, there's so much correlation to prophecies at such an incredibly remote possibility or probability that those things would occur. Now, some things prophecies talk about, like the moral degradation of society. Well, first off, it's really hard to get valid data of how immoral are we really relative to the Middle Ages, or did we just keep a lot of it under the covers and behind the, behind the curtain in the Middle Ages, right? Are we really more promiscuous now than we were then? If we are, I don't know. I don't have the data to say how much more. Um, so we discount it. It's something that has existed throughout history. Uh, we just don't know to what level. Maybe it could be worse now because of pornography and the internet. Maybe not. But because there was no data, we didn't account on those things. We only looked at things where we, I could I could assign data and attributes, correlations, and probabilities to. And that came out that 1.4 trillion to 1 was an eye-opener for me. It started me thinking about prophecy in different ways. It started thinking about how do I assign attributes to things and, and assign things and understand these things correctly. And one of the mistakes that most people who taught prophecy, I was, their, their, their teachings developed 100 years ago or more, hundreds of thousands of years ago, their doctrine formed when the events that prophecy was talking about, the situation wasn't set up yet. So they were always speculating as to what it could be. And that became the tradition of how to interpret it. But when you get down to it, it we're having the same problem today that the Pharisees of the first century had. They had, in, they had decided in their mind how the Messiah would show up and become this military leader. And they knew the prophecies, but they had developed this narrative about it that would fit their biases. And because they weren't looking outside of those biases, they completely missed all of the things that happened right under their noses. Well, I blame a lot of pastors for doing the exact same thing. They've been teaching their biases for so long that they're missing the things that are happening right under the nose. So let's go back to your first comment that is AI the beast or the, 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 the Antichrist. First off, the Antichrist, it, there are many Antichrists in the world. And so it formed, it basically defines a set of characteristics. But there is a character that is, that is defined, and there's 10 or more attributes to this character. Lawless, a deceiver, a divider, a destroyer, um, a, um, and I, I'm having a mental block on all, all 10. 
but we can define those attributes and they have to they have to fit somebody. And the other thing is the Antichrist would come from a nation that had a very powerful military, one of the most powerful militaries on the planet, and would um, come from one of the beasts. That There's two beasts defined in Revelation and two dragons. So the Antichrist would be somebody that would come from one of those two alliances. So, but AI does play into this prophecy, but let me, I'll come back to that. So when we look at the one beast, the one beast had seven heads, 10 crowns, and 10 horns. Well, when I look at attributes, I see an alliance, a powerful, this is an, these are two big, basically political power centers on the earth at the time of this, all this happening. There's two beasts, one of them that I just described. Well, that defines, if I look at it, that's the G7 economies. There's 10 monarchies. There's, most people don't realize this, but there's 10 monarchies that exist within those alliances, right, with between Europe and Japan that still exist. And there's 10 financial centers that basically drive the power of that monarchy that and, and NATO is the basically undisputed most powerful army on the planet right now. So and there was another thing that the beast would need to have, the Antichrist would need to have, was the ability to impact um, um, commerce and transactions through the supposed mark of the beast, right, and to, to impact how people were going to pay for things. Well, in 2023, about three, four, actually 2024, about four months ago, the International Monetary Fund announced that they were going to produce the first ever international bank sponsored currency. And the, at the same time, the World Economic Forum, which is part of the same organization that the uh, World IMF belongs to under the Bilderberg, announced that one of their goals over the next few years is to replace the US dollar for the currency for international trade with this digital currency and that digital currency in order for it to operate will be using an AI platform. So we do see the AI coming into the prophecies, but the beast, the Antichrist actually is an individual, one of the more powerful leaders, and he's actually in plain sight right now today. Uh, if you look at the attributes and I try to point them out in my books without naming names, but just to get people to think about that. Um, the AI, though, there's a one of the prophecies that deals with all of this says that one that the they will bring they will breathe life into an image of the beast. So take that financial, social, cultural, religious, political, military, banking, um, information, media, all of the things that define modern city is reflected where on this thing we've created that we can't really control well, called the internet. And we've now given it a voice, which we've said that the prophecy said it would be given a voice. That voice is coming through AI. Now, at some point, that voice, that image, that beast, that image of the beast with a voice will be given power over finances. And this is what's gonna happen when the IMF and the digital currencies start to take over. Um, when we start seeing central banks using replacing monetary cash with digital cash. And one of the reasons they'll want to do that is because then gives them much more control. I can now transfer money all overseas rather than taking days, I can do it in a matter of seconds. I can get blockchain security over the transaction, but now I can use um, AI and quantum security over the whole system. And it becomes a way of then saying, well, if I suspect somebody is a criminal doing criminal activities, because it's digital, currency, I can cut them off, right? Um, just like 10 years ago, Greece had a financial meltdown with their deficit. And the bow of the banks came in, the international banks came in and they said, okay, Greece, we're going to, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to raise your taxes. You're going to have to cut your spending. And we're going to basically go into the bank accounts of every single business and person in Greece. And we're going to take money out to help pay for your debt. And that's what they did. Every single um, citizen in Greece woke up one morning and had roughly a third of their bank account basically depleted in order to pay for the national debt. Digital currency and international digital currency would give that power to the international banks in a much more powerful way. So when we see all of the systems, it's, it's a misinterpretation to call AI the Antichrist. Um, the Antichrist is an individual. He's lawless. Um, he's a deceiver. He's a um, destructive, he's a destroyer. 
he's a would considers himself as a replacement for God or as equal to God. Um, he has the ability to impact financial decisions um, through his power and military decisions and military weapon. Um, he will be one who calls for a peace deal in Israel that would try and create peace in, in, in the Middle East. Um, and uh, there's a couple of other things that he does that, that haven't occurred yet, but I believe I know the individual. And this is the person that everyone says 666 about, and, and that's been a real confusion for everybody else. I have somebody I've, ident I've identified through all the attributes and it's merely, and, and it's, it's mainly by just applying the attributes. And there's only one other person. There's, there's only one person who, who right now there's two or three people who fits a good majority of the attributes, but there's only one person who fits all of them. And so in my books, when I talk about how AI will decode prophecy, I have the AI basically building those same sort of, probability, correlation, algorithms, and regression models that I built years ago. And using those same techniques, because those are the types of techniques an AI would use in order to understand any, they would use that same sort of mathematical um, approach, mm. as opposed to dogma and all of that. Right. And so basically, to make sure I fully understand what you're saying, you're saying that the Antichrist, from your understanding, from your research, um, from you just kind of looking at the probability and looking at the attributes of the antichrist you're saying that the antichrist is actually an individual at the moment but the ai could be a representative of that the 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 more nefarious side of ai is does it's that make image sense of the, it's an image of the system mm, okay. that gives that antichrist his power right mm -hmm. the image of the beast now the beast is the g7 the 10 monarchies, it's basically the Western alliance is one of the beasts. The other beast is basically Russia, Iran, and China. And what it's exactly what we see today is two big, giant sources of power playing off of each other. And to the point where we, we're, it could pose existential threats, right? Putin is constantly threatening nuclear, nuclear response in Ukraine if he doesn't win. If he doesn't win in Ukraine, if the if the former president wins in the election, he'll give Ukraine to Putin, right? If he loses, Putin's going to be desperate. Putin's going to be trying to find a way out. Uh, nuclear response is a possible response. And I believe that he'll start by trying to make it look like an accident by attacking the nuclear plant in, in Ukraine and basically sabotaging that and creating a um, Chernobyl uh, event out of that. But it also goes back to the Middle East, to the Saudi crown prince, uh, to the Muslim, uh, Islamic and Muslim prophecies about what they call the Dajjal and the Mahdi, which is their version of an Antichrist and a Messiah as well. Um, a lot of the, many people don't know, but the Hindu prophecies, Mayan prophecies, Hopi prophecies, all talk about a cycle of destruction. Uh, and in the, the course of humanity that we're in some cases like Maya and Hindi also talk about repeated cycles of destruction, uh, creation and destruction. Uh, and so there's a lot of when we look at the correlation factors between prophecies, even if we just if we expand it beyond just the Judeo Christian prophecies to extend to these other traditions, we also see a high correlation. So there's something certainly going on that's unique to this time. Because I, I wanted to find out, are we living just in a very chaotic time of high transformation and high technology and uh, the society going through this upheaval to try and adjust to all these things? Or is there something truly prophetic about what we're experiencing? Mm. And based on the math, uh, I concluded it's prophetic. 